In this video, we're going to look at cross-site scripting attacks on Ruby on Rails and what you can do to mitigate them. So let's go take a look at what we're talking about here with cross-site scripting. Here's our comment list. It's just a list out of our database, our um, Movie Critic database from the comments table. And we have the comments field here. We have the date, time, stamp field here and then we have some actions that we can perform on each of these things. And you'll notice I've put in some odd looking code into these last three comments here and first off we're gonna go and look at what that code actually looks like so let me go in and find the show and close that back up and make our window bigger here. Okay as you can see in here we have these wrapped in in the H which stands for the, the safe HTTP so we can make sure that it's going to escape out any stuff. So if we go ahead and show that, you'll see the actual comment in there. And in this case, it's, it's some alert JavaScript. So we've got alert string, some embedded string inside the script and it's actually closing out the script and then it goes ahead and calls that. So it's setting up a JavaScript method of alert and then it goes ahead and calls that script. Let's go back and take a look at another one here. And you'll notice we just saw it in there. And here's our another one. It's actually commenting out some stuff and then it sets our background color of this particular text right here. And then finally, this one here sets our background color to a particular thing of the whole screen. So, let's go. And right now you notice it works the way it's supposed to. It's safe. It's not It's not doing anything there that's too ontoward other than someone trying to inject some stuff in there. Now let's take a look at it. Oh, there's our alert. We get an alert that comes up now that was coded in there and kicks us over there and we can see the code again. Here's the one where it actually embeds something inside of there some JavaScript that changes that. And finally, here's one that changes the background color. So you might be thinking, well, so that's a little destructive of the page. Where this comes in and is really dangerous is that if you have on another machine, a remote machine somewhere, or if you're a hacker on your server, you have a little script that captures cookies, you can put a JavaScript into that field since it's gonna go ahead and run whatever script you have in there and have that script sand over the particular cookie for a given page. So if an administrator logged into a program and went to a comments page and viewed comments that were sent in there by that hacker including that JavaScript, as soon as they open that page that JavaScript code would send over that cookie data to that remote server and whatever's in the cookie that hacker's going to see. And in, in our case here, that cookie stores the session ID and any other data that you might have stored in there. So if, a, if you weren't managing your sessions correctly, if you just statically assigned sessions to people, so a hacker could get that session and then create his own entry into your system. So another little caveat when regards to managing sessions, just as an aside, is to go ahead and kill that session when someone logs out. Now I've created in our little critic portion of this application a logout method so when they click and they log out you can actually go in and set that session to nil and it'll close it out. So make sure you do that in order to keep your application secure.